Okay, I'm doing my presentation on Pembroke Welsh Corgis, and um, actually the picture right here is um, the breed standard that provided on the AKC website. So, and if actually it's pretty interesting if you go on their website, they have little like checkpoints on different parts of this body, and it'll tell you like this is what the head is supposed to look like, this is what the coat is supposed to look like, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So. Breed standards. Every yeah. breed has standards. Um, so just a little more about the breeds. Um, I had a lot of fun putting these pictures together. I bet you did. Um, they're one of two breeds known as Welsh Corgis. So the other breed is the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. And their difference is that the Pembrokes have their tails docked and the uh, Cardigans don't. So they can either be docked, like, well, okay, so Pembrokes can be born with or without tails, and um, so if they're born with tails, then they'll be docked whenever they're puppies, but certain countries don't allow tail docking, so they'll actually select for um, the natural docked tails, which uh, is a autosomal dominant gene, but the double dominance or just two capital mm -hmm. like the, homozygous yeah dominant. Homo homozygous dominant is lethal oh, really? so yeah so uh, if your corgi is born without a tail it's heterozygous and okay, I capital A is yeah. for the doctor tail so um, they're actually a cattle herding dog that originated in Wales. I was very surprised to learn that they're a herding dog. Um, so they have medium size and energy and they're affectionate, alert, and really smart. And they respond really well to training and they really like to have jobs to do. So it's kind of funny if they don't, if they're like a house pet and they don't really have training or like a job or something to occupy their time, they'll create a job for themselves. <laughs> and sometimes, I read online that sometimes if there's like small children playing or running around, they'll like try to herd the little kids. <laughs> and you have to watch for that though because they can nip at the ankles <laughs> with a cat with And cattle. what's wrong with that? It hurts. Parents don't really like it. Um, <laughs> But they're also excellent guard dogs and really loyal to their families because they are so alert with herding and everything. So, And then these are the four uh, standard colors. So you'll, you have uh, black and tan, fawn, red, and sable, and then some other colors that aren't necessarily standard that you'll see are black and white, blue, or just completely white. And then uh, standard markings are just white, so none of the black, brown, red, or tan markings. So if you notice with all of these, um, the markings are all white. So those are just the standard colors. And then nutrition and feeding. Uh, Pembrokes are really prone to overeating, so you have to, you know, with any dog, you have to consult with your veterinarian about a feeding schedule. And of course, it all varies by age and size and weight. But um, and then also health, special health and um, disease issues that your dog has. But feed-wise, a lot of uh, dog food companies have special formulas for like small, medium, large, and extra large breeds. And uh, the AKC recommends feeding them a small breed formula so that they don't get overweight. Coat and grooming, um, they have medium coat length. Um, they recommend grooming them regularly because they do shed a lot. They've got two layers of coat, like most dogs, and bathe occasionally. Uh, trim, they want you to trim their nails pretty regularly because uh, their nails are pretty hard and strong and fast growing. They didn't say why, but I'm gonna assume it's because they, if they're a herding dog historically, then that will wear their nails down pretty fast. So I'm assuming it's to control that. And then, you know, with any pet, check ears, clean teeth, just keep, you know, general maintenance. Exercise and activity. Um, they really like physical activity and having jobs to do, like I said earlier. 
Um, so they recommend at least basic training and uh, basic obedience training. And they can be seen in competition for obedience, herding, tracking, and agility. And they actually thrive on farms because they are a herding breed. And they're still used to uh, herd cattle. So I have a video. It's not, well, it is hell, actually. Do you need any sound or? Um. Okay, I get, we got sound here. This one actually I think is a cardigan. I couldn't find any temperate, like good quality temperate ones. But yeah, they're fearless. Like you'll see one of the cows try to kick him. Right there, and he just goes right back in. And then another thing, uh, because you'll notice he's, the dog is barking a lot to herd. Uh, anyone who owns a corgi will notice that they bark at a lot, basically anything that moves. Because I guess yeah. they're so used to it. And it's a high pitch, like mm -hmm. screech. Okay, I was wondering where, where you want the cattle to go. Okay, yeah. in the gate. Okay, wild, fine. Open the gate, yeah. Open the gate, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you got to jump in. So, I don't know. I thought I had no idea that they were a uh, herding breed. Mm -hmm. So, I was really, because they're so small, I just never expected it. But um, I was really impressed by that. And then uh, their health, they, they're generally a healthy breed. They have a lifespan of 13 to 15 years, but just like with any other breed, uh, good, like good breeders will uh, get you clearance for some of the things that they're prone to, such as hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia, which I didn't know that you could have elbow dysplasia, but I guess you can. Um, hypothyroidism and von Willebrand's disease, those you can get clearance for from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals. Um, I had no idea what von Willebrand's disease was, so I looked it up, and apparently humans and dogs can both get it. And it's a uh, blood clotting, like a blood disease that impairs blood clotting. So um, once it's diagnosed, uh, there's no cure, but it can be maintained. Um, and then thrombo, thrombopathia, which I didn't know what that was either. And it's also a blood clotting disorder. <coughs> and all the research I did said that it was mainly prominent in basset hounds. They didn't say anything about corgis, but I just, I'm, I just yeah, assumed Yeah, it must that be it, something they get. Yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, normal eyes, so they check for things like cataracts and, or like the proneness to get cataracts and like uh, retinal dysplasia and stuff. And those you can get uh, clearance for from the Canine Re Eye Registry Foundation. So, and then some other things that uh, they're prone to, degenerative uh, myelopathy, DM, and it's uh, progressive degeneration of the nervous and connective tissue on the, in the spinal cord. Uh, and it generally affects the lower back area. So it'll start off with uh, reduced motility of uh, those hind legs and then it'll eventually lead to paralysis. And it's often misdiagnosed as uh, this next disorder, intervertebral disc, disc disease. And that is when a spinal disc ruptures. A lot of dogs with uh, short legs and long backs like corgis have a lot of back problems. So it's just a confirmation thing. And then some things kind of unique to corgis, they sleep really weird. If you see right here, they sleep, I've got a video along with this too, but they either sleep like this on their bellies with all four legs just like flat, or it's the opposite and they're on their backs with all four just sitting there, um, which I'll open the video before I explain. It sounds like you had fun putting this together. I did. It was a lot of fun. There's a lot of times to let me do. <laughs> this lady tries for like a whole bit and the doctor doesn't wake up. <laughs> no. Let me sleep. Is she trying to wake him up? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, wow. Well, it's kind of like a massage. Why would you wake up? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the most 
And then the fairy saddles, this is kind of weird. But, um, so there's a scientific explanation for how, where corgis developed historically, and then there's like a Welsh, Welsh legend. The scientific one is just that they're a result of different uh, breeding between breeds, and then eventually they were classified as an AKC restricted breed. But then the Welsh legend is that two Little kids were out in the field with their cows, and they came across two corgi puppies, and they thought they were foxes, but they noticed like a weird marking on their backs, and knew that they weren't foxes, so they brought them into their parents, and the parents like recognized them immediately as puppies. And in order to explain like the weird marking on their backs, the parents told their kids that it was where the fairies in the field would put their saddles to ride the corgis in the bow. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so I had to put this picture in, of yeah. course. So I guess choose whichever story you'd like. But I'm just. This should have happened in the epic movie. Have you guys seen Epic? No. no. Okay, where like the fairies of the woods like f like have an attack with like the bad people that kill the forest. They could have totally rogue it on. They could have. That would have been so historically correct. Yeah. So uh, that's just kind of a fun little thing. And then this is my dog Bella. Okay. She isn't full corgi. She we found her in the woods when okay. my dad was hunting. Uh huh. And uh, you can see partly. It'd be interesting. Yeah. She's like, I think the vet said she has Jack Russell in her. And now, where is she at now? Home. I live in Evansville, four hours away. Okay. So she's at home right now. But it's kind of, this is kind of a funny story. My, we also had a black lab at the time, and my dad didn't think that it would be an issue not fixing either, either of them because of the size difference. <laughs> but we were 